guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's Thursday, it's nine o'clock, which means it's time for a magic stuff. And I'm back again today with another of the three best trick series. Now, today I'm going to be talking about three more tricks with double backers that you've never seen before. Now, I've done a couple of videos like this before. I think that double backers, in my opinion, are one of the most useful things that you can add into a deck. Having a double backer in a deck of cards really opens up the possibilities when it comes to different routines and different effects and different tricks. Having a double backer in the deck is great. You can throw one or two double backers in, have them there when you need them, and take them out when you don't want them. Like, seriously, it is one of the most underrated weapons that you can have as a, as a close-up card magician. And, you know, I do see people saying, oh, you should never use double backers. You should only ever use, uh, you should only ever be pure and just use regular decks of cards. And, you know, my attitude's really simple. I owe it to my audience to give the best possible performance that I can do. And if that means that I need to use a double backer, well, so be it. That's what I'm going to do. Now, the wrinkle on this video is that these are three tricks with double backers that are my routines. So these are routines that I've created. Um, yeah, and uh, there you go. Three routines that I've created using double backers that you might, you might never have seen before. Now, I've talked about other routines with double backers on this channel before. I've talked about back off, which is one of my favorite routines with double backers. You can go check that out on the original video. Uh, but I'm talking about three three other routines. So if you like double backers or you like uh, watching routines that might help you expand your, uh, you know, expand the ideas of what you can do with a double backer or just fire up your creativity, then this might be the video for you. So without further ado, let's have a look at three tricks with double backers that you might never have seen before. So the first video that I'm going to be talking about is going to be a, I, I call this uh, Spectator Cuts the Aces. It's now, I'm not very original when it comes to naming tricks, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but this is basically my version of Spectator Cuts the Aces. Now, if you don't know what that plot is, the idea is very, very simple. You have a spectator cut off a packet of cards, then another packet, then another packet, then another packet. And at the end, uh, you have four packets of cards and they've cut the four aces. That's basically what it is. Now, one of the most popular versions of Spectator Cuts the Aces is by John Bannon from his book, uh, Smoke and Mirrors. That's a very popular version. But you know, over the years, people like Bill Malone and people like Darwin Ortiz, uh, uh, Greg Wilson, the list goes on and on and on, Eldo Columbini, they've all come up with their own different ways of doing Spectator Cuts the Aces. It's a very powerful plot, and it's a plot that I've always liked, because one thing is it does is it empowers the spectator. From a routining point of view, I actually really like starting with an ace production, uh, where you've obviously produced the aces in a really magical way, and then from that ace production, you then go into... Uh, you then transition into a routine where the spectator cuts the aces and you kind of give them a pseudo explanation of how it's done and then you say to them, you can do it as well, why don't you try? And it's kind of empowering the spectator. I've always kind of liked that thing where you do something and then you teach the spectator to do it, but in reality, they haven't got a clue how it's done. And that's what this routine is. Now, I'm going to show you a performance of this in a second, um, but what you're going to find with this is it's... Um, uh, it, this routine is something I'm really proud of the routining side of things. This is based on an old uh, force with a double backer uh, called the, I think it's the Henry Chris force. And uh, it's a very popular force to force one card. And I remember sitting there and I've used this force for years and thinking, well, can I use that to, to, you, to cut to four cards? And there are so many problems where you actually go down that route creatively. Creatively, There's so many problems that occur. And I spent, I spent a long time fixing those problems and coming up with a solution that you're going to see here. Like a long time fixing those problems. Because the other thing that I wanted to do with the routine is I didn't want to have lots of adjustments between the cuts. And when you see the performance in a second, you'll see it looks like they just cut. They cut, they cut, they cut. There's no adjustments. There's no... Um, nothing like that. It looks like they just cut four times and you just take the card they cut to and put it on the table. So let's have a look at a performance and then I'll talk about why I think this is so good. Um, Jack, I've got a pack of playing cards. That's All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would give you these cards typically to shuffle, but uh, as you're behind the camera, I'll shuffle them for you, okay? But you are going to have to cut the cards because one of the things that magicians are obsessed with 
is finding four cards from a deck of cards that are the same. And the ones that most magicians try to find are the four aces. And they normally try to find them by cutting the cards and cutting to the four aces. It's a very difficult thing to do. We're going to try and do that. Okay, mm -hmm. and I say we, I mean you. You're going to cut the deck four times. You can cut anywhere you want to each time. Wherever you cut, I'm going to take that card and put it on the table. And the goal is for you to try and cut to the four aces. Okay. So let's give it a go. Uh, I want to start off by cutting anywhere. You can cut shallow like that. Just cut a few. You can cut in the middle. You can cut deep. It's totally up to you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cut at least seven or eight. You know, if you want to. Okay, cool. Turn them face up and put them back on top of the pack. Very, very good. Are you happy with that? I'm happy. Like that first face down card there, that's where you cut to. Right, so I'm gonna put that there on the table, all right? And we're gonna do it again. So let's let's try this again. So what I want you to do is just cut uh, like wherever you want to. And turn. And turn, yeah, you're doing it. You're, you're a pro already, Jack. I mean, this is absolutely amazing. It's almost like you've been doing this your whole life. So again, you cut to uh, to this card. This is your first face down card, right? That one right there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pop that one down on the table as well. So that's two cards that you've cut to. Two cards down, two cards remain. Are you ready for the next one? Let's do it. Let's do it. So you know what you've got to do now. You've just got to cut somewhere you want to, anywhere you want to. Turn fit. You're so good at this, Jack. Goosebumps. Genuinely goosebumps. Tell let's you, have a look. Tell you. Let's have a look at where we are. Okay, that's that that's that one, right? right. And that leaves us with, with 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 one last card that you've got to cut to. So we're going to do it one final time. One final time. Amazing. And again, we'll go through for that first face down card. Now, which is that one there, right? Now right. think about this. You cut four times, and for the magicians watching this, there's no breathers or anything like that. That's not how this works. Uh, it is regularly uh, a regular pack of cards uh, with one little extra something. But you could have cut anywhere you wanted to, Jack. Correct? Yep. And you cut to these four cards, and I think you did an absolutely oh, come on. incredible job. So there you go. So first of all, um, I, I perform this routine all the time. I love it. I love the fact that there's hardly any setup. It's one double backer. You're ready to go. Um, and as you can see, it's really clean. It takes a different approach to the spectator cuts the ace plot, but it's really clean. They literally just cut the cards. You spread through, you put the card on the table. They cut the cards again, you spread through, they put the, you put the card on the table. You do that four times. There's no ambiguity. And because it's all um, done here where they're picking the cards up and turning them over, there's no table. You can just deal the cards into the spectator's hands. You can get them to hold the hands out and you can deal the four cards into the spectator's hands. Uh, which makes it perfect for walk around. The other nice, which you don't normally see, by the way, when the spectator cuts the aces. The other nice thing of this is you can get four people involved. So you can get one person to cut, then you can get a second person to cut, a third person to cut, and a fourth person to cut. That's really, uh, I just realised my collar's sticking up. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, that's really nice as well. Uh, the other thing that's worth, uh, worth talking about is it's actually really easy to do. There's no moves. Uh, well, there are a couple of moves, but there's nothing like really, really difficult. It's as close to self-working as you're going to get. Um, and the nice thing is there's only one double backer involved. So when you finish the routine, it's a simple matter to get rid of that double backer and you're left with a regular deck of cards with the four aces out and you're ready to go into whatever routine that you want to go into. Uh, which works really well as well. It's super visual. It's an engaging plot. It lends itself to various different presentations. Uh, it's an interesting hook line. Um, there's just so much to like about this trick. And as I say, it's always a great follow-up to a flashy 4 ace production. Um, yeah, I mean, you've seen the performance. It's really nice. Uh, you can learn it on the Netrix. It is actually available on the Netrix. So if you want to learn it, that's where you can learn it from. Uh, but yeah, I, I really love this. It's something that I perform all of the time. Uh, so there you go. That is the first uh, trick with double backers that you've probably never seen before. Okay, so the second routine with double backers that you've never seen before is, uh, or you might not have seen before, is based on something that me and Lloyd came up with, Lloyd Barnes. And then I expanded on it and uh, changed a few bits and pieces around. And what you have here today is, in my opinion, the final iteration of this plot. And it's based on um, splitting the aces. And there's lots of different splitting the aces style plots. Uh, you've probably seen Paul Harris, who really, you know, with Las Vegas splits from Super Magic, originated this whole thing. But then after Paul Harris, you know, Greg Wilson on the Pyrotechnic Paceboards. Was it Pyrotechnic? I think it was Pyrotechnic Paceboards, but it could, could have been Card Stunts. Let me know down below. In either Card Stunts or Pyrotechnic Paceboards, 
Uh, he put a cutting the aces routine out as well, which is great. But so many different people have done splitting the aces. Well, this is uh, an interesting use of a double backer because you're actually bringing a double backer into play. You're actually showing them a double backer uh, and you, you, you're openly talking to them. Hey, this is a special card. It's got a back on both sides and it's programmable. Now, that sounds ridiculous, but let me show you how this works. And I actually find that really interesting. And I know there's going to be people that are watching this that go, oh, you're exposing gimmicked cards to spectators. I can't believe you're doing that. Why should you do that? And, and uh, you know, my attitude is from a presentational point of view, from a hook point of view, they just find this fascinating. A double backer is an impossible object. And when you actually turn around to them and you say, well, you know what? Magicians don't need to use sleight of hand. They can use special gimmicks that do the magic for them. Look at this, it's a programmable card. They actually buy into that. But when you show them a card that's got backs on both sides, when you start to split those cards, they, they actually buy into it that it's a thing that could potentially happen, right? Um, which is really fun, really engaging. Um, I'm going to show you a performance of it first. You can have a look at a performance of it. And then once you've seen the performance, we'll talk about uh, why I like it so much. Uh, I've got a pack of cards and I'm going to actually tell you how magicians do some of their tricks. Oh, yeah. Because there's actually something that as a magician you can carry around with you, a special little something that makes finding playing cards, any card in the deck, really, really easy. Now, that sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to prove it to you, okay? Uh, but first of all, you need to take a card. So I'm going to riffle down the deck. Just say stop. Stop. There, are you sure? Yeah. This is the card. Can you look at it? Got it. Very important you remember it, because later on when, you dramat when I dramatically say, this is your card, if you got I don't know, it loses its impact slightly. So make sure you remember the card. <laughs> We're going to get another card as well. Um, we'll get two. So I'll do the same thing. Say stop. Stop. Right there, near the top that time. Can you look at that card as well for me? Yep. It's not the same card as before, was it? Because No. No, good. So, two cards lost somewhere in the deck. Is that fair? Yep. Now, let's... We'll get back to those cards in a minute. Let's just say for a second I wanted to find the four aces from a shuffle deck of cards, right? right. How would I do that? Now, there's two options. The first option is you spend years of practice learning sleight of hand, or you get these. Now, you can carry these around with you and use them anytime you want to. Not that one. But these three, these are three very special cards. You get them from magic shops. Now, they don't look special from this side, but when you look at the other side, they've actually got backs on both sides. Now, these are called double-backed cards for obvious reasons. They've got backs on both sides, but they're actually programmable double-backed cards. Really? Yeah, seriously. There's a little button there. There's a microchip inside the cards. and It allows me to program this card to produce anything I wanted to. So let's say I was producing the four aces. All I would do is I'd bring one of these cards out and you wouldn't be aware that this card's got a back on both sides, but I'd take one of these cards out. And what I'd do is I'd just program it. You see a push here and that tells me, it tells it it wants the aces. So that when I split it open, it looks like I've actually got the two black aces. That's how it works. That's exactly how these programmable cards work. And then while you're reacting to that, I'd sneak another one out onto the table. You wouldn't know about this one. I'd never show you that it's got a back on both sides, obviously. And what I'd do is, as I'm pointing to it, I'm programming the aces, right, you see? And uh, and then what I'd do is I'd just wait a second and I'd get the other end. That's how it works, Jack. That's what the... That's a, well, there's nothing magical about it. That's basically just how it works. That's what you uh, you do. You take the back. Uh, you, I mean, that's how you find the four aces. Obviously, as well as the four aces, you picked two cards, didn't you? Yeah. What were the two cards, Jack? The eight of spades and the eight of clubs. So that's the eight of spades and the eight of clubs. Yeah. That's two, two black eights. That's what, crazy. What are the chances? Two black eights. Well, I just program that there like that. And all I have to do is just split it open. <laughs> and I get your two cards, the two black eights. That's how it works. That's exactly what you do. Just don't tell anyone. I get kicked out of the magic circle for the third time, and I really don't want that. The third time, lucky this way. So that is, uh, yeah, so, so that's a really fun routine. Again, it's a routine I do an awful lot. Uh, if you have seen my routine back off, uh, back off ends uh, with three double back cards. So at the end of the routine, you actually make three double back cards appear, which people can examine. From a routining point of view, this is a great routine to follow that up with because you've got the three double backers on the table. You can then say, well, you know what these cards are? They're programmable. I know that sounds ridiculous, but let me show you how it works. And the two routines actually flow from one to the other really, really well. So if you've seen my routine back off, this is a great routine that you can go into after that. Uh, using double back cards really helps uh, sell 
that card splitting process. But I love the hook to this routine. I love the whole idea of saying, well, let me explain how magic works. It's all to do with gimmicks. Look, this is a gimmick card. It feels like you're pulling the curtains back a little bit and letting them into a world that they know nothing about. And, and, and then when, you know, I've had so many people that I do this routine to, and they actually believe it 100%. Uh, the other thing that this does, in my opinion, this is only my opinion, is it solves a problem that I've always had with uh, card splitting routines, which is I always tend to find that routines where you're splitting cards, it's a bit anticlimactic. You know, it's normally I'm going to split this card, I'm going to split that card, I'm going to split that card. That's kind of it. And uh, it's normally the four aces or whatever. With this, I love the fact that, you know, you've got these three cards and they're programmable and you start off by making the aces appear. And logically, if you've made the first two aces appear, you're going to make the next two aces appear. But then you say, hey, I can actually do this with anything. What was the name of your card? What was the name of your card? Look, I'll program them in. Boom. And it gives the splitting routine a really big finish um, because they, it, it kind of says to them, well, you can do anything with this. It really does kind of give it that finale that I feel that this sort of routine is looking for. Uh, and I love the fact that the final split is so different to the first two. Um, so yeah, I'm really high on the, on the routining behind this. I really am. The reset can be, uh, the setup can be done in literally seconds. And, uh, yeah, it's just a really super fun routine that really packs a punch. Uh, and again, you don't need a table for this. I mean, obviously I performed it with a table, but you don't need a table. You can do it in a walk around setting, which works really well. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's another use of a double backer. Like I say, different use of a double backer. I will say one thing. Uh, in this routine, you saw me take out three double back cards. Uh, I have on occasion done this with one double back card. If I've only got one double back card, I'll do, I'll bring out the double back card and I'll do the card split into the aces. I'll put them down to one side and I'll palm that double backer out and I'll say, let me get you another one. And then I hand that to them to look at and I go into the second split and then I palm the double backer off and I say, let me try and do one more thing with you. I've got one more of these. So even though they're saying, seeing the same double backer three times, uh, it feels like they're three different double backers, if that makes sense. Uh, and sometimes that's a little bit cleaner. It means I don't have to carry three around with me. Uh, obviously, the trade-off is I have to palm a card, but the, the card is being palmed at a very low point in terms of audience. Uh, they think that, that they've just seen the split, so their their focus isn't there. It's on an offbeat, if that kind of makes sense. Um, so there you go. That's the second routine with double backers that you might never have seen before. Let's go into the final routine. So the final routine using a double backer that you might never have seen before is my version of Twin Souls by Danny D'Ortiz. Now, if you don't know Danny D'Ortiz, he is a fantastic Spanish magician. Uh, he's one of the best, in my opinion. Uh, he's not, I, I mean, I'm, I, my favourite Spanish magician is Woody Aragon uh, and always has been. But I think it's probably going to be Woody, Danny and then Juan. Uh, but there's some amazing Spanish magicians. Uh, anyway, I'm getting distracted. The point is, uh, he released a trick many, many years ago called Twin Souls. And Twin Souls is a flash production of four aces or any four of a kind. And the problem with it is Danny does this timing force, which is amazing, but only works if you're Danny Deotis. And what I mean by that is it's not the easiest force in the world to do. It's, he, he does it flawlessly every single time because he's Danny D'Ortiz. But it's not very easy to do. And I remember trying it and trying it and trying it and missing and missing and missing and screwing it up and screwing it up. But I really, really like the routine. So over the course of a few months, I was trying to work out a way of doing this without actually using the... Uh, the, the timing force because it just didn't work for me and I, I came up with a way of actually doing a force off a spread of cards using a double backer and since coming up with this I use this force a lot in various other ways I'm really proud of the the way that this force works it works really well 
um, because how it looks to the spectator is you literally just spread out a deck, you take cards one at a time and you just drop them onto the table and they can say stop anytime they want to and they can literally carry on or put cards back and wherever they stop, you take the card, you turn it over and that's the force card. Uh, and it works perfectly in this routine because I can replicate the same thing that Danny did, but without doing the incredibly difficult timing force. Um, and there are a lot of applications to this force, not just uh, what you're about to see here, but there's a lot of other things you can do with it as well. So without further ado, let's have a look at the performance. And then once you've seen the performance, we'll talk about... Um, uh, we'll talk about why I like this song. It uses a deck of playing cards, and I've got Jack behind the camera. You all right, buddy? Yeah, man. Now, I'm going to get you to help me here. I'm going to take cards off the top of the deck one at a time, and what I'm going to do is put them there, okay? Okay. And any time you want to, like any time at all, just say stop. Stop. Now, it's really important that you know you've got a free choice here. If you want to stop there, that's fine. If you want me to put another card on top, that's absolutely fine. It's totally up to you. Do one more card. One more card, just there. Do you want to do one more card? No, I'm happy with that. Are you sure? Yep. Now, you could have carried on all the way through the deck if you wanted to, right? right. The card you ended up on is this one here, the Ace of Clubs. Was that a free... Because you could have stopped on any of those, right? All right. I'm going to put the rest of them back here. You stopped at this point right here, yeah? Yeah. I want to show you something, and I'm going to do this at the tips of my fingers. I want you to watch that I don't cheat. I'm going to leave your card that you stopped on, the Ace of Clubs, face up. I'm just going to square up the rest of the cards. Is that fair? Yeah. Now watch. Three, two, one. And now when I spread out, what the fuck? every single ace has turned face up in sympathy with your ace of clubs. What? Isn't that weird? That's what... Kind of crazy, right? I don't want to work here anymore. Kind of crazy? No, please do. <laughs> so this is a great opening routine when you're doing parlour. So when you're doing a parlour show, you need a table. For sure, you need a table, 100%. You don't actually need a close-up pad because it will work on any surface, but you do need a table. Um, at least for this particular routine because you have to spread the cards out on the table. Um, you, need, you need a table. But this is such a strong opening routine. You know, when you when you when you're talking about openers, this ticks all the boxes because it's quick, it's visual, it's something they don't expect. You end up with four aces, uh, which is absolutely perfect because you can then go into any four ace routine that you want to. It's only using one double backer, which ends up on top of the deck, so you end up in a situation where you can actually either palm that double backer off or use it for something else. Many times, I'll tell you right now, many times. Uh, I actually do, and this is ironic, but I do the three routines in this uh, in this video. I do the three routines back to back. So I use this to uh, produce the aces, first of all, okay, uh, in a real flash production because it feels like they're getting a choice of any card. Then when I've produced them, I'll then, uh, I'll then take the card, take the aces and apparently lose them in the pack. And I'll talk about, uh, and I'll palm that double backer off as I bring it back out again and I go into the flash production. And then at the end of that, I lose the aces in the pack again, and then I go into the cutting the aces and I let the spectator to do it. And it's a nice three phase routine using one double backer and you're left with a regular deck at the end of the whole thing, which is great. Um, the force itself is really clean and um, you, can, you can use it in so many different ways. I've got two or three routines that I do all of the time that use this force. You know, you sometimes do routines where it's really important that the force that you use is really fair and it feels really fair. Well, this is this is a great force to do for that because it feels really fair. And that moment where you just take the card and you just turn it over, it, it just flies by everybody. Like every single time. Nobody just, I've done this so many times now. Uh, it's perfect in this because obviously you need the deck spread out in order to do it, but you can do it off a table packet as well, it, for sure. In fact, I've done this walk around. I give the deck to somebody and I just start taking the cards off and putting them into somebody else's hand. And as long as you've got decent audience management, it's not a problem at all. And then you just, they say stop and you take the card and you just put the rest back onto the spectator's hand. So yeah, um, it's, it's, but Try this because the flash production, that moment where you spread the cards out and they see uh, just a normal deck 
and then you know they pick a card and apparently it's a free choice and then you square up the cards and spread them out again and you've got four of a kind it's an absolute killer uh, and I highly, highly recommend learning it. Again, it's available on Netrix, so that's one that you can learn from Netrix, uh, and it's a really fun routine to do. So there you go. That's, uh, that's, that's the third trick using double backers that you might never have seen before. Uh, so there you go, guys. That's three tricks using double backers that you might never have seen before. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you love a double backer as well as me? Let me know in the comments down below. Are there, are there other videos in the three trick series that you want to see? In which case, again, let me know in the video in the comments down below. I would love to know your opinions and your thoughts. Uh, you want to see more videos like this? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. You want to join The Net Tricks, please go to www.thenettricks.com and you can get access immediately to all the content on there. And I will be back again tomorrow with three more videos. So I'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm.